Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. Yes, this is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with. And we are going to rejoice and be glad therein. Boys and girls, I pray that you are ready to enter into this summer to prosper and succeed so that at the end of the summer, you will be better better than you were when you went into the summer. And one way in which you can do that, boys and girls, is by setting some goals. Yes, setting some goals, some small goals, boys and girls. Yes, you want to have fun during the summer, but you also want to be productive so that when you start the school year, you are better than you were when you entered into the summer. Amen? Amen. So set some goals, small, simple goals. And, um, and watch how your life just gets better and better and you grow and grow. And not only do you grow, but at the end of the um, summer, boys and girls, you are entering to whatever the next school year is with the right mind, the right mindset so that you can go and learn and be the best student that you can possibly be. That is my prayer for each of you. Amen. Amen. Let us go to prayer to our Heavenly Father, and then we're going to go into the Word for today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, as these children are already preparing to go into the summer break, I pray, Father, that you will bless their hearts and their minds. Those who are going to camps, those who are going to summer school, those who are going to other forms of care, dear Lord, those who are at home, I pray, Father, that you will actually bless them in a mighty way. Bless them with the mindset, dear Lord, to set little goals so that they can begin to achieve over the summer and become all that you have called and purpose for them to be so that when they enter into the next school year, they are ready, ready to be the student that you want them to be, ready to be that leader that you want them to be, ready to be that example that you want them to be amongst all of the darkness that is going to be in the schools as well. Lord, we love you. We adore you. May this word that they hear today, dear Lord, be something that will be a seed planted into their hearts that produces roots and bear much fruit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we can ready to go into the word for today. And as we prepare to go into the word, I want you to get your Bibles because there are some scriptures that we will be referencing in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. The title of today's lesson is, why do we obey? Why do we obey? Boys and girls, let me ask you this question. Why do you study hard in school? Why do you study hard in school? There's a motivation behind why we study hard in school, why we sacrifice fun time and play time why do we sacrifice some sleepless nights so that we can do well in school and another one boys and girls why do we exercise why do we go out and exercise run around making sure that um we are moving and and there's um not just sitting we're not just sitting and playing video games all day and night or watching tv all day and night why do we continue to shift our bodies and move around on the outside riding our bicycles running and riding our scooters and just having fun on the outside and here's another one why do we obey our parents why do we obey our parents, boys and girls? Why do we do these things? Why do we do all of these good things? Because they are all good, boys and girls. And um, I would like to propose to you the reason why we do all of these things is because of faith. What do I mean by faith? Boys and, boys and girls, faith is being sure of what we hope for. And it's being sure of what we do not see. That is what faith is. And so that is why we do what we do. Boys and girls, we don't see we we do not have yet our diploma, our high school diploma yet, right? But we see it in our hearts, okay? We are sure of it that we are going to one day receive our diploma. And so therefore, we are motivated and inspired to study hard so that we would do well when we and get ready to and get ourselves ready to graduate from high school. So when we are sure that we are going to graduate one day, we study hard. When we are sure, boys and girls, that we are going to get stronger, we exercise. When we are sure that we will be rewarded someday by our parents, then we obey with a happy spirit. In other words, that is what faith is. It's being sure of what we have. We don't have it yet. 
but we're sure that we're going to receive it. We hope that we're going to receive it. And I'm not talking about a, a wish list type of hope. I'm talking about a hope that we believe with all of our heart that if I, for example, continue to study hard, that I am one day going to graduate. If I continue to exercise, I believe with all my heart that I am going to get stronger. And I believe that if I continue to be obedient, obedient to my parents with a happy spirit, that I am one day going to be rewarded for my obedience. That is what's called faith boys and girls it's not um being sure of what we receive i mean what we already have it's being sure um and hopeful for what we do not have and we believe that we will receive amen amen and that is what happened with um in the book of hebrews it talks about then hebrews chapter 11 it's called the faith hall of fame and what's the faith hall of fame these are hall of famers these are individuals who are sure that one day they were going to see god face to face in the kingdom of heaven so therefore while they were here on this earth they lived an obedient life they did the things that was pleasing and acceptable in the sight of God, knowing that God is faithful and one day they're going to receive their great reward. And what was that great reward going to be, boys and girls? A home in a place called heaven. Let's talk to let's talk about one of them. His name is Abel. By faith, it says in verse number four of Hebrews chapter 11 that Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering and by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. That's Abel. And then there is another one named Enoch. By faith, Enoch, he was taken from this life so that he did not even experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him up. And why did this happen? For before he was taken up, he was commended as one who pleased God. Boys and girls, he was obedient to God. Why was he obedient? Because he knew that one day he was going to have a home in a place called heaven. Here's another one. That was Noah. By faith, Noah, when he was warned about the things yet seen. In holy fear, that means reverencing God, obedient to God, he built the ark and saved his family. But it was just not about saving his family here. It was about his obedience to God because one day he knew he was going to see God face to face. And here's another one. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go to a place that he would later receive as an inheritance, he obeyed and went and and, and though he did not know where he was going, yes, he left everybody behind, him and a few other individuals went. They just went, not knowing where they were going, but they trusted God. They believed and obeyed God. Why would they go so obedient unto God? Because they knew that one day they were going to see God face to face in a place called heaven. Even there was Sarah. Sarah, at her old age, she believed that God was going to give bear her a child, even at her old age. And what what was what's up with that with that with that with that belief and that faith? Because of her faith and her obedience, boys and girls, she did it because she trusted God, and she knew that. She was one day going to see God also in the kingdom of heaven face to face. And there was another one. His name was David. David was obedient to God. Obedient. Why was he so obedient to God? Even facing the giant Goliath because he knew that one day he was going to be in the presence of God in the kingdom of heaven one day. In other words, they were sure of what they hoped for. They were sure of what they did not see. And that was a place in the kingdom of heaven. So why did these uh, these and other individuals obey? Let me read for you in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 13. It says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. In other words, they had not yet received what this thing that they hoped for, this thing that they did not see, but they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. The things in which they were hoping for, they welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. In other words, they were saying, this world is not my home. I am just passing through here. I am just journeying through this because there is a greater place in the kingdom of heaven awaiting for me. And so because I know that, 
I'm going to live by faith. Now, here's the thing that did, had not yet happened. Their forgiveness of their sins and the salvation of their souls had not yet happened. And why not? Because they're, they, they were in the Old Testament, they were making offerings and the offerings in which they were given, they were giving those offerings, boys and girls, that was the offering of bulls and, and, and goats and calves and, and doves and, and all of those types of things, but they could not take away sin. So what they saw in the future was a coming Messiah, Jesus, the Savior of the world. So those who believed in God did not receive the promise while they were alive, but they trusted that they would receive. The promise of forgiveness and salvation were theirs. In other words, they were going to, they knew they, they were going to see you. And so they did not live as they going to be on this earth for a long time. They lived as strangers on this earth. They were preparing for a greater home, a home prepared for them in the kingdom of heaven. And that came through their faith, they believed that God, God had promised that a Savior was going to come, and they believed that with all their heart, and the Savior did come, and their souls were saved. Yes, when Jesus died, boys and girls, for our sins, he died for not only, he died at that time for the sins of the present, he also died for the sins of those in the past, and he also died for those who, um, who have yet to actually come into this world, the sins of those in the future. That is, that is the promise of Almighty God in those in the um, Hall of Fame, the, um, in the book of Hebrews, those who live by faith, they lived on that promise. And they believed with all their heart. And that is why they obeyed. And therefore, the ones in the Hall of Fame of faith did what they did to the glory of God. They were not doing it for selfish gain because they didn't want to gain nothing here on this earth. They were strangers here on this earth. And they understood that great was going to be their reward in the kingdom of heaven. They lived for who? They lived for God, not for themselves while they were here on this earth because they knew that they had a greater reward in the kingdom of heaven. And did they receive it? Yes, they did. Through the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, their sins were forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. And those in the future sins will be forgiven as well. So God is looking, boys and girls, for others, others who will have faith, looking beyond now to their reward in heaven and living a life that shows that their faith, that shows their faith to the glory of God. In other words, you are living a lifestyle now, not for your own selfish gain, for you to leave a legacy and all this other stuff. No, you want to live on this side of life for the glory and honor of God and Jesus Christ, our Savior because greater is our reward in the kingdom of heaven. So why do we obey? Boys and girls, we obey because we are bound for heaven. Every step that we make, every move that we make, every word that we say should be one step closer to us entering into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, we God has promised it and we are sure of what we hope for and we are sure of what we do not see. No, we do not see heaven and we do not see it right now, but we hope for heaven and it's not a blanket hope or a wish for hope. It is a hope that we know that God is faithful and he promised and God has been faithful throughout our lives and he will continue to be faithful and one day we are going to see him face to face. So boys and girls, what we, how do we live here on this earth? We live here on this earth looking to heaven. Obedience on this earth, living in faith, such faith, boys and girls, that same as the faith of um all of the ones in the um in the Hebrews chapter eleven. Read about all of the other um characters in the um in Hebrews chapter eleven and their faith. And boys and girls, here's the interesting thing about each one of them and their extraordinary faith. They were just human beings, just like us. Yes, they were human beings, just like us. But what they saw, what they saw, is heaven. They saw a home in heaven and this world not being their home. They lived as if this world was not their home, living by faith, obeying the will of God so that when they see God face to face, he will say to each of them, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That is for you and that is for me as well. Amen. Amen. So in conclusion, boys and girls, the first step, the first step in faith is believing in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. We are saved by the grace of God through what? Faith. Yes, that means, boys and girls, when we trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, we don't see it, but we hope it, and we also 
believe it, that God washes away our sins. He unites us with Jesus Christ um, in the kingdom of heaven, and we are part of the family of God forever. And then after salvation, we set our hearts on things above and not on earthly things that are temporary. Boys and girls, that is the call of God for each one of us. Why do we obey? Because we are heaven bound, boys and girls. We are heaven bound. Yes, we are heaven bound. We who have already put our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, our steps that we make is not for us to make a name or anything here on this earth, not for us to gain as much as we possibly can on this earth. Everything that you see, everything that you can touch here on this earth is going to pass away. But what's going to live forever is our soul. And God desires for our souls to live for him, forever with him and the kingdom of heaven. So what are we to do, boys and girls? If we are already in, um, we are already in the family of God, live by faith. Oh, yes, live by faith, trusting in God that he is with us. He would never leave us nor forsake us. So when the prompting of the Holy Spirit comes and he tells us to do something, just do it. And trusting in God and believing in him. OK, and so that is what faith is, boys and girls, because we want to obey now so that when we go before the presence of God, he tells us, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But for you who are out there who do not know Jesus Christ in the forgiveness of your sins, you have to take that first step of faith. And the first step of faith is believing that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried and he rose again on the third day with all power in his hands. What God would do is he would take the blood of Jesus. He will wash away all your sins through the blood of Jesus, and you will become a part of God's family, united with him forever, and that comes through faith. If you're ready to actually take that first step of faith, then I would like for you to repeat this prayer after me. Favorite step of prayer, and God will do the rest. Amen? Amen. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I am a sinner. I have done some bad things in my life, and I understand that my sin separates me from you. But I believe that you love me and that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for all my sins. I believe that Jesus was buried and he rose again. Please forgive me of my sins. Now I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life, to be my master, to be my ruler, to be my king. I give my heart to Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for saving my soul by cleansing my soul with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So boys and girls, if you said that prayer with all your heart, you are now a part of the family of God. You've taken that first step of faith, amen? And now that you've taken that step, you are heaven bound. So live a life on this earth as if you are heaven bound. Not trying to gain as much as you possibly can here on this earth, but store for yourselves treasure in the kingdom of heaven. And how do we store for ourselves treasure in the kingdom of heaven? We obey. That is why we obey. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray that this message has been blessing, been a blessing to your hearts. Until we meet again, boys and girls, be safe, be careful, and obey. Living by faith. Amen. Amen. God bless you.